welcome back folks it's Friday and quite an interesting uh, subject for today's video but first before I uh, let you know what uh, what that is I do first need to thank the uh, Bomber Command Museum of Canada and Halifax 57 Rescue now that might give you a clue to what this video is about uh, I shall put some links down in the description Please, please go check them out. Anyway, this week, um, something happened which I didn't expect. Uh, not when I first said this comment. So let's just go back in time a little bit to July the 10th last year. This room I do think really wants... Um Ideally a Merlin engine and a Bristol Hercules. And if you've got one, any condition, please uh, comment below. Yes, that statement um, was just aimed at the universe. But somebody did here. And by August, this happened. So yes, it might sound a bit crazy. But I felt it appropriate to turn the, the airfield lights on today because the delivery is two Merlin engines, a tailwheel assembly complete with the tyre, some panel work, and the propeller hub from one of the said engines. These all belong to Halifax HR 871 from the uh, Canadian 405 Squadron. So it was with great thanks to Halifax 57 Rescue, Cal Cascard, Andy Ward and all people involved in the recovery of uh, HR871 we got a Merlin engine to display at the, at the museum, at the RAF Snaith Museum but what about a Bristol Hercules? Now, you've seen my videos on the reduction gear, which was from MZ763, a Halifax Mark III, which flew from RAF Breton, and it was shot down. It was shot down in 1944, crashed in the Netherlands, and sadly three crew members were still on board. And I managed to free this, this reduction gear off and get it to rotate, for the first time since 1944. The engineering blew me away. So when I got word that we were going to be taking another delivery, and again with a massive thank you to the Bomber Command Museum of Canada and Halifax 57 Rescue, we had a delivery this Tuesday. So let's go take a look. Here you go. Here you go. Thank you. 
So here it is, a Bristol Hercules engine, 37.8 litres, 14 cylinder sleeve valve radial engine that is supercharged. And this one is actually fuel injected. Um, first up, this is a 216 Hercules, not the type fitted to the Halifax, however, they are very, very similar and what a beautiful thing, I'm quite speechless folks, I've got nothing done in the workshop since it came, I just keep staring at this thing because it's, well let's be fair, it's beautiful. So, why is it here? Well, it's to be displayed at the RAF Snake Museum, but first it needs an inspection. On behalf of the uh, Bomber Command Museum in Canada and Halifax 57 Rescue, I'm going to do a cylinder inspection on this engine to assess the condition of the sleeves. Uh, the sleeves being needed for other engines. Uh, it could be a donor and if they're good and we remove them, the engine could be put back together and won't look any different. I have no intentions running this um, because it won't have any sleeves. Unless the sleeves are in poor condition, and then it won't run anyway. But what a piece of history, folks. Let's take a closer look. So, what is a sleeve valve? Well, with a big thank you to Andy Ward, who 3D printed uh, this sort of single cylinder to uh, demonstrate. You can see inside there we have the, well, let's start at the bottom, we've got the crankshaft. We've got the piston, and we have two exhausts, as you can see, two exhausts. And then round here we have the inlet, which we pop round here, there's the inlet. So, as the engine rotates, this as you can see here, is the sleeve. This hole here is just so we can see the piston, but as it rotates, you can see how the sleeve moves. Ooh, I don't know if it's still in film. But as you can see, the sleeve moves up and down and oscillates side to side which allows the port to be uncovered. For example, this is about to go on the exhaust stroke and as you can see in there, the port is uh, open, allowing exhaust gas out. At this side, you can see an inlet port and as the engine rotates, it uncovers the inlet port and closes the exhaust port. A very uh, unique way and obviously, getting spare parts is not going to get any easier as the years go by. So, as you can see, we've got a sleeve inside here that moves up and down and actually rotates, which is all controlled. Now, if we look in here, you see your multiple gears. They're all in this part here to operate each of the uh, sleeve valves. As you can see, we've got two rows of cylinders, 14 in total. So, as you can see, she's quite a beast. So, with a semi-understanding of how the sleeve valve works with my clumsy demonstration, Let's take a, a bit more of a look around this. So we have two rows of seven cylinders, 14 in total. Each having two spark plugs per cylinder. Coming from the magnetos, we have two. We also have the Hobson fuel injection throttle body on this. There's actually two, there's an injector down each of the Venturas. Originally these were on carburettors. 
And at the back here, in this area, is the supercharger. So it's forced induction through all these pipes into the cylinders. It has to be said, folks, just, I don't know, I'm quite blown away by this thing. It's rather beautiful. But that's not getting the inspection done. So, folks, when it arrived, we did have a, a quick look over it, and we noticed something not good. If I, uh, if I just move those two out of the way, folks, and look down there, you'll see there's no spark plugs in her. And that seems to be the case for every cylinder, except that one. But even those spark plugs are what should be in it. That's not a good sign. So I think what we'll do is set up my ultra cheap and um, bar camera, what I can poke down holes, and we'll take a look. So, we have this very cheap, nasty parkside uh, camera. And what we'll do is if we rest a torch and shine through one plug hole, like so. And turn it's not good folks I mean yeah you can see but not a very quali good quality image so let's see if we can pop this in the cylinder Ew. That torch is any good or not? That's just. Bit hard to tell, folks. That's... That, I don't know, that's hard to tell, folks. Let's just. Uh... Ooh. Take a photograph of that. No. Hmm. What is that, folks? I'm going to say rust. What the hell's that? Hmm. Well, that one doesn't look too good, folks. Let's uh, try another. What the hell? Well, there's a mouse nest in that one, folks. Unbelievable. Yes, there's definitely something in there. Hmm. Oh dear. Oh, we'll try another cylinder. Let's just poke it down another one. Who takes spark plugs out of an engine and leaves it? Right, again. I'll put the torch shining through one plug hole. Ew. 
move. That's not good folks. I'll take some photographs folks and I'll, uh, I'll put them on the screen. Unfortunately, they're a very low resolution. Spin them that way. It's not looking good. You see rust. Okay, that's uh, not looking good folks, let's take a look in another cylinder, come around this side. Okay, we'll take a look in this one folks, I was hoping to see shiny cylinders. I'm not sure what's in there. Take a look. Hmm. Well folks, the verdict doesn't look good. So I just managed to uh, get this spark plug out. Don't think that's the right type somehow. However, one plug might be original. Can I get the torch in there folks, but I can put the camera down and take a quick look. See if it looks any better. Right. There's a hole. I guess in the... Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't see the bore on that one because the piston is quite close to the top. That's a bugger. Uh, yeah, I can't get round. Which cylinder is that? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's just have a quick look at something I've just spotted. I've just noticed somebody's taken the nuts off that exhaust pipe and that clamp isn't tight. I might take that pipe off and just actually see if we can see anything into the port. I've also noticed all the nuts on this cylinder, these little tabs, 
have been bent back as if they were to be undone, or they have been undone. But we've looked in that cylinder and it doesn't look very good. Hmm. Don't think we're going to be saving sleeves out of this one, folks. However, if anybody does just so happen to have a set of 14 sleeves, drop a comment below. So, can we uh, wiggle this pipe out? Get that off. That's obviously catching on there, so if we can do these. Somebody's put nice new clips on this, and I do suspect they've been off. Clips off, we can take the shields off, and then we should be able to pull the paint out. And see what's uh, what's inside. Take a look. Well folks, this sleeve is in the closed position for the exhaust, but that's not good. Ooh. It's not good at all. Yeah, we're just gonna blow out with the airline. Oh dear. I would suggest She's completely seized up, folks. That is not what we wanted to see. Oh dear. GT85 isn't going to sort this one out. What a crushing disappointment. Everybody was hoping this engine would have been internally good. I suspect it's seized on all 14 sleeves. The results of this quick inspection are not good, unfortunately. So, what next? Do you know anybody with some uh, Bristol Hercules sleeves stashed away? Comment below, folks. But despite its condition, what a wonderful piece of British engineering. Anyway folks, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing and all that jazz. Catch you on the next one.